Carbon and silicon are two of the most common elements, constructing the world as we know it. But what if they were switched, meaning that every occurrence of carbon was silicon, and vice versa? What would change the molecular level, and more importantly, what would the entire world look like? Before we can discuss the effects of carbon and silicon being switched, we must first highlight some similarities and differences between the two elements. Firstly, they are both group 14 elements, meaning they have four valence electrons. Because of this, carbon and silicon can form grid-like molecular structures with four covalent bonds connected to each atom. However, silicon has an atomic radius that is approximately 66% larger than carbon, and silicon is approximately 233% heavier than carbon. Because of their difference in size, a carbon-carbon bond is far shorter than a silicon-silicon bond, meaning that a carbon-carbon bond is far stronger than a silicon-silicon bond. While they are both solid at standard temperature pressure, silicon's weaker bonds give it much lower melting and boiling points, 1,414 Celsius and 2,900 Celsius respectively, than carbon's 3,642 degrees Celsius melting and boiling points. Moreover, Silicon's larger size and greater number of electrons allows it to form hypervalent bonds, meaning that it can go beyond the typical octet of electrons, unlike carbon. However, this does not commonly occur in nature. Next, let's discuss the importance of the two elements in our world, starting with carbon. Carbon dioxide makes up 0.04% of the atmosphere, and as that number rises, more heat is trapped in Earth's atmosphere, raising the global temperatures. As humanity continues to burn non-renewable resources, more carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere. Carbon is also the basis of life on Earth, since long carbon chains are what our bodies are made of. Additionally, our respiratory system releases carbon dioxide once the carbon in our lungs reacts with the oxygen gas that we inhale. But carbon-based life isn't where the majority of carbon lies. 70% of global carbon is in the ocean. Some of that CO2 takes the form of carbonate sediments on the ocean floor while some is absorbed and released as the surface waters exchange gases with the atmosphere. Finally, carbon is used as an energy source in the form of hydrocarbons, including oil, coal, and natural gas. Like carbon, silicon has many functions and uses in our world. Firstly, silicon is essential for plant life, being the second most abundant mineral element present in soil. Silicon dioxide is approximately 50 to 70 percent of soil's mass. Additionally, silicon plays an instrumental role in modern technology, used extensively as a semiconductor in microelectronics industries. Computers and cell phones operate using silicon to transfer and block electric signals. Finally, silicon is found in minerals and sediment. To be specific, silicon dioxide, or silica, is found in nature as quartz and sand. Now that we've analyzed the functions of both carbon and silicon, we must observe some of the consequences of switching their roles. The big question is, what would silicon-based life look like? Well, silicon-based life can only exist at very high temperatures, since silicon lacks the flexibility to move at temperatures around standard temperature pressure. Furthermore, silicon does not form long chains like carbon does, so proteins, carbs, and fats could not be created. Along with this, we would exhale silica, which is essentially sand, meaning that in order to exhale a gaseous compound, our breath would be at an incredibly high temperature, higher than 2,230 degrees Celsius. It would be incredibly hard for a silicon-based life form to develop, since it would need enzymes and digestive juices capable of breaking down silicon. So perhaps silicon-based life would be very surreal, but what would the world look like? Well, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would become silica, essentially covering our skies with sand. Furthermore, we would lose access to many energy sources, meaning that we would have to adapt to either renewable power, such as wind, water, or solar power, or find a way to use silicon as fuel. Silane, or silicon hydrogen-4, can be utilized as an alternative to methane, CH4, but it would not be nearly as efficient. On the flip side, all of the sand and quartz in the world would become carbon dioxide, which would be an incredibly high amount. This newly created CO2 would enter the atmosphere and amplify the greenhouse gas problem to a whole new level. Moreover, electronic devices would cease to work, 
as carbon cannot transfer electrical signals in the way that silicon does. All in all, the replacement of carbon with silicon and vice versa would completely turn the world upside down, since the two elements' unique functions cannot be replaced by the other. The planet depends on carbon as the foundation of life, and silicon cannot fill that role. Conversely, carbon cannot function as a replacement for quartz, sand, or electronic signaling devices. While these elements do have similar bonding patterns and similar oxidation states, they are drastically different in how they react in nature. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.